Right, do you want to tell us a little bit about flow? That's your big thing, isn't it? Flow, being in flow. Absolutely. There you go. Well, just before, um, to be honest with you, before I came on the stage this evening, I was also thinking to myself, did I come on to my sort of Max Wall and say, good evening? Or did I just say hello? But I've decided hello is probably more appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I can't, I'm, I'm crap when it comes to uh, Max Wall impressions. Hold up some stuff, people do say I'm wall like them. But, um, I, I, first thing I'd like to say is, um, Joe, yes again, put on another model for you. So let's give Joe a round of applause. I've heard some great stories this evening. People tell me about the changes they want to bring in people's lives. And I think it's really inspiring. And, and Joe's one of them. You, you know, welcome them to this. Happy enough, uh, Liverpool author's job. So, uh, <coughs> let's give him a welcome as, as an author. So, give him a look. Come on, Joe, welcome. You know, um, Joe mentioned my property career. I, I, I remember it must be about 18 years ago now. And uh, there I was, I had uh, two officers, 15 staff. And uh, I remember sitting in this lawyer's office, and anybody that's run a team will tell you that there are challenges that come with running a team. And I, I, I can recall quite vividly there were times I'd come home on a Friday night and thank God I was the big joke and I've got a Bob. And Bob is the guy who's the last 30, 40 years since I, I, I got last fight was Miami 1988 and yet I am getting on quite a bit now. But um, he's a guy who holds the pads for me so I'm still going to work out. But for me it was a great release. I had something that was able to uh, channel my energy when I felt uh, anxious, when I felt overwhelmed. And I, I, but I had that. And, and sometimes I'd be really bloody angry, you know, really angry at something that, that happened in the day. So I, I, I now I can, I can look back and say, well, I was responding completely wrong. And I can accept that now. And it was me, I was responsible for the way I was responding. But what I can say is that after being on the pad, it was all forgotten. My focus, everything, everything had completely gone. So here I am back in this lawyer's office 18 years ago, and right in front of me there's a book Thank you. called The Power of Now. Has anybody ever read that book, The Power of Now? Yeah. And, and that from that book for me was a life changer, in the way that Joel's book will be a life changer in helping people. That book for me was a life changer because what it did for me, suddenly I opened this page and I was reading about somebody that was anxious, sometimes they were overwhelmed. So I was reading about that, and I, it occurred to me, the person he's talking about in this book is me. That's the person he's talking about. He's directly talking about me as if he knows me. And it really had my attention. And his, his opening gambit, his opening argument was this. I cannot live with myself. I cannot live with myself. That's what he kept saying over and over. He was in this real rut, in this bad place. That nobody likes to go. And what he was basically saying is this is the duplicity. Am I two people? And over time I've come to realise this. That if you were to weigh me now, knowing them I was a lightweight, and knowing that now, but if you weigh me now, I'm probably about 30 and stone. <coughs> but if I suddenly dropped dead here and now, and you weighed me directly afterwards, I would still be 13 stone, but I wouldn't be here. I want to say that again, I wouldn't be here, but I still weigh the same, what's missing? The thing that's missing is the spirit, the heart, the soul, the thing that moves man. That's the thing that is missing. And it's the realisation that I am myself, what we're really talking about is the mind and the spirit. That's really what we're talking about, and we don't always realise and appreciate but in Yale University will tell you 96% of what you do, 96% of what you do is through patterns, habits and routines. You may not appreciate that. You might say, oh, it's 20%, easy. But it's 96%. You don't realise the pattern and the habit and the routine that you fall into even without thinking. The fact that you're here now, you probably woke up and did the same routine. You probably woke up, you maybe clean your teeth first, then have a shower, then get dressed and then have a cup of coffee, whatever it was, they're standard things. 
But do you realise the way you talk to certain people, the way you talk to your boss, the way you talk to your children, the way you talk to your peers, you fall into a pattern of routines in the way that you communicate with people around you. You don't mean to, but you do. Well, let me give you an example of what I mean. How many of us have been in that situation? We even come home after half days away and we up about a bottle of wine. And the next day we said, God, did I really need that extra glass of wine? Did I really need it? No, you didn't need it, but your routine or your habit was that you just followed it through. And then there's the person who sees that last cooking on the tray and knows it's just lying there and then decides, well, I'm going to eat that last cooking on the tray. You know you shouldn't have done it because for some time now you wanted to lose a little bit of weight. But what you did is you, you had the cooking. Or alternatively, Thank you. you may have been saying to yourself, for some time now, I'm going to wake up an hour early. And the reason why I'm going to wake up an hour early is because I want to keep fit. I want to change things in my life so I'm going to keep fit. What do you do? You sleep in. They're all habits and the routines. They are things that you mean to do, but you don't do them. Every one of you here, every one of you here was born to not fear. You were born joyful. But through the years, someone said, do that, Johnny, you're going to hate yourself. And it's something that's in your mind. I mustn't do that because I want to hate myself if I do it. And it becomes a routine. It's a piece of software that's been installed in your brain that's running constantly, constantly, all the time. It's there. It's on autopilot. You don't have to think about it. You just fall into it. I realised most of these patterns and habits that we fall into, we fall in without thinking about them. And the issue here that we seek no improvement in what we do and yet we just go through the motions of what we do day in and day out with not finding no improvement in what we do. And that became something that was really challenging for me. And it was the reason why I wrote, find your flow, take up the path of mastery. Because I wanted to help people change those patterns and routines that were slowing them down and they were unable to move forward with their life. From time to time, I get people to phone me up and say, John, John, I want to change some habits. And the type of thing I'll get is, uh, I want to lose some weight. That, that might be an obvious one. I've tried everything. On this diet, that diet, I want to lose some weight. And the other one is, I want, I want to stop smoking. And he says to me, how do I stop smoking? John, you won't understand, though. You're not a smoker. You won't understand. And I look at this person and I say, so it, it's hard to stop smoking. They say, yeah, it's really hard to stop smoking. I said, okay. I said, just, just tell me this. I said, do you work hard? And they say, yeah, I work really hard. I say, right, right, it's okay. Does it take you a lot of effort to earn your money? He said, oh, yeah, bloody right, it does. I said, and then you go out and pay for your ciggies. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, and then when you've got your ciggies and you nip out, you forgot to put them in your pocket, but sometimes you jump back in the car and go on an extra car ride to grab, to grab you some extra ciggies. He said, yeah, 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 I've done that before. I said, so that costs you money as well. Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, and when you want to store your ciggies, you've got to find your pocket, because you don't want to crush them, and you don't want them to get wet. So you've got to store them somewhere, you've got to have a decent jacket, but yeah, that's right. And when you finish smoking, you can't just stub it out the floor, because someone will come along and give you a fine. Is that right? I went, yeah. I said, so you're telling me that's easy, but just don't put a ciggy in your mouth. And the point of it is, the point I'm making is that I'm starting to change the belief system, the pattern, the routine, and that's what I, I look for. I look for those small openings that help people change patterns. That's exactly what Pain Point Coach is all about. That's exactly what, uh, what, I, what I do. Um, uh, many of us in this room now, many of us in this room are, will be in the afternoon of our life. But we're still living it as if we're in the morning of our life. And what do I mean by that? You're still chasing a fast car, you still want the bigger house, you still want more money. But people were talking about what pulls the heart. The spirit is a thing I mentioned to you earlier when I said, when I die, I'll still wear the same. But there'll be something missing, the essence of what I am, the spirit. It seems to you, many of us will pass by our mortal cord and the music that plays inside will go with you because you never gave it the chance, you dimmed your light because you were too scared of what everybody else thinks about you. 
It was Carl Jung, the psychologist, who said, the surest way to lose your soul is to believe in God outside of yourself. And what I'm saying to you now is that change comes from the inside. And my book, Find Your Flow, Take the Path of Mastery, which is available on Amazon, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, that book, what it does, it gives life stories of people who reach glass ceiling limits and the way they smash. And there's some people who've really contributed to this book. Fantastic people who made fantastic efforts that have really changed the near field, changed people's lives. And what I've also done is this, because there's no dichotomy between the, the, the brain and the body. Both have to move together, yin and yang. It's so essential. They have to move. Chaos and order have to move together. You have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. You have to get to know the unfamiliar. That means you have to be prepared to change. My job is to coach you to be able to step out onto that change and to make the things just happen to you naturally. So where the black touches the white in that fine line, you begin to flow. And for me, that's exactly what flow is. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, John.